Hello and welcome to another Top Gear Philippines review and if you clicked on this video you already know what we're gonna talk about today. It is the all-new GAC GS8 and you probably have one or two things in mind already. One is you're genuinely curious about this full-size crossover or you just want to head on to the comment section and say some hate comments about its country of origin. But here's the thing, let's take that out of the equation first and let's see the merits and what the JC GS8 has to offer in the first place. And then let's go back to that after and see if some of that perception is gonna change. Okay, so we'll skip to the good part and start out with driving impressions. And we're now on the highway. Now, the GS8, I would say the natural element for this big crossover is the expressway because it's such a big car and it has a very long wheelbase. Couple that with the very, very well damped suspension. The GS8 isn't your typical midsize SUV. It is a unibody, so there's no truck chassis running underneath us. And that gives GAC the option of giving it fully independent suspension. So when it comes to comfort, I hate giving superlatives for comfort or any of that, but it is superb. Okay, so it's comfortable, but how's the performance, you ask? So the GS8 is powered by a 2-liter turbo petrol engine and not a diesel, mainly because the Chinese market is allergic to diesel engines. They generally do not offer diesel passenger cars or SUVs over there. The power is rated at 248 horsepower. And here's the more impressive bit. Torque is 400 Newton meters. Now this isn't a performance car per se. I mean, but if you're gonna compare it to the turbo diesels and sort of the more mainstream PPVs out there, this is a whole lot quicker. So it rides well, the engine's great, it's got a lot of pull. But what about the matter of fuel efficiency? Around heavy traffic, I managed 7.6 kilometers per liter, and uh, that's with an average speed of about 17 kilometers per hour. So that's kind of moderate heavy. If it's probably even heavier traffic, okay, a more realistic figure would probably be around six, six and a half, but that's not bad for something that has nearly 250 horsepower. But on the highway, the trip meter says 6.2 liters per 100 kilometers, and that's uh, give or take about 15 to 16 kilometers per liter. And the reason for that is it has an eight speed automatic transmission. As for handling, it's not the GS8's strongest suit. Road holding's good, it's actually pretty good. It's front wheel drive, so it doesn't have any shocking handling characteristics or any of that. If you value comfort above everything else, you should really, really take one of these for a test drive. Or better yet, get a driver and take it for a test ride. This thing has, you know, all the active safety stuff. Lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, uh, automatic emergency braking and whatnot. And I have to mention something about the lane keeping assist system. You can really feel the steering like pull you from one direction to another in like minor changes in lane direction. Initially, it might catch you off guard, but um, yeah, if, if you could just learn to trust it, then it'll do its job. We're gonna kick things off with the interior and there is a lot to cover because this is a very fully loaded crossover. But I do have to mention the seats first of all because they're pretty soft and they're pretty comfortable. Now moving forward, the steering wheel, yes, it is a three-spoke design. Right ahead of me, of course, is a digital instrument cluster because what car doesn't have one these days, especially at this price point? What's interesting here also is this pattern. Now, GEC didn't go for the typical wood or brushed aluminum. Instead, they went for this rather interesting and intricate pattern. I have no idea what they call it, but it is interesting nonetheless. And now I turn your attention to this huge touch screen. As for functionality, you do get voice control and um, most of the functions are available down here. You're going to use, you're going to rely on the iconography right down here. Now for media, there is a bit of a mortal sin 
and it might be a turnoff for some potential buyers, it doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. However, if there is one thing I would like, it would be the presence of physical buttons, particularly for the climate control system, because you have to dig through the screen to adjust your AC settings. Now, moving down to the center console, it's a huge storage bin right down here. You also got a pair of cup holders and a pretty huge center console box here. What I do like about it is the whole box actually is trimmed in leather. It's up to you to believe if it's genuine or not. But I also noticed that it's got real stitching here. It's not molded on plastic. It's not simulated stitching or whatnot. It is really stitching. Now down to the gear selector. Okay, it's a plastic piece, but it looks nice. It looks pleasant to the eyes and it even has this sort of crystal finish on top of it. And for those not used to an electronic gear selector system, your park is a push button here. And to change gears, basically you have to move it up and down. So it's up for reverse, down for drive, and one click forward for neutral. So while my hands were moving around here in the center console, I noticed that JC didn't put like gloss black plastic all over the place here in this spot, because this is where your hands are gonna be often. And as you know, gloss black, would mean a lot of fingerprint smudges. It's nice to have on the dashboard face because your hands rarely go there. It's not that you're gonna smear your hands here all over the times. So when you open the door, the ambient lighting pulses just to remind any oncoming traffic that one of your doors are open. What's the situation here at the back? Now look, I do understand that I have the habit of giving cars a lot of legroom because of my height, but this is genuinely, genuinely spacious. You can put a six footer back here and they're really not gonna complain. Okay, just to give you an idea of just how much room there is back here, this seat is all the way back and you can actually slide this forward and back and I'm gonna put it all the way up front. Yep, that's actually still pretty sizable. I still have about this much leg room. As for the rest of the rear end, of course you got this much headroom. Now granted, again, I am not that tall of a person. Also, if you'll notice, the GS8 also has a flat floor. And that means even if you're seated here in the middle, you still get a fair amount of room. Of course, you get your little armrest. You also get the same stitching pattern you see at the front, more faux leather here. You can open the gigantic panoramic sunroof as you can see it rolls all the way back here and it's a huge huge piece of glass so from the sunroof we divert our attention down here to this panel now this panel is the climate control for the second and third row passengers a little lower down you're gonna see a pair of USB A ports and just below it is yet another cubby holder and so that's everything you need to know about the second row area and all its space and features and whatnot so it's time to head to the third row and we are genuinely curious how much space is left back there and to keep things interesting i won't move the seat two clicks forward i'm gonna keep it as is and see if it's still pretty comfortable back there so in most three row vehicles to get to the third row you're you're gonna pull a lever and the seat tumbles forward or slides forward but in the gs8 it's a little bit different because all you have to do is push a button and it does everything for you. So space back here in the third row and let's start from top to bottom. Now headroom you have about this much, knee room you have about this much then. So definitely no go for anyone taller than five foot five. But the foot room situation is a little bit interesting because if I keep my toes behind this little trim piece down here it is tight and i am forced to sort of curl up in a fetal position but if i go through it okay it's a little bit better but other than that okay it's really strictly for small adults and children which is typical for any three row crossover suv what we demonstrated a while ago was the second row pushed all the way back and you know as you saw it was a little bit tighter 
However, with so much legroom available in the second row, we decided to push it about four clicks forward. And this is the legroom situation now in the GS8. As you can see, it is much better than with the seats pushed back. So we've shown you the interior, the features, and the space and whatnot. So it's time to move on to the cargo area. And um, I want to show you a neat little trick first. So just wait for it. See, the GS8 has a, basically a smart tailgate and all I have to do is get closer to it so it'll open by itself. So the cargo space, well, it's typical for any three row crossover or SUV. There's not a huge amount behind the third row. Okay, you can probably stuff some soft bags in there. But if we fold down the second row, sorry, third row rather, you get a pretty sizable cargo area. Plus, if you need to store some stuff in secret, you have a little cubby hole down here. The cargo area also has a 12 volt socket and here's a neat little design detail. So these handles, yeah, they could just flop around anywhere. Some manufacturers would put on Velcro so just so they're not all over the place. But in the GS8, they actually bothered to put magnets in it. So it comes back into place even with a gentle touch leaving the cargo area very neat and tidy. Now, the overall exterior design was well, pretty bold, it's pretty brash. It's got flared arches, pretty boxy design, very upright. And in some ways, it's a nod to classic SUVs. Now on its side, of course, you're gonna see what exactly what I mean when it comes to its slab-sided proportions. Now the glass house is very tall and rather upright. And then you have this bold character line that runs from the front all the way to the back of the crossover. What I do like about it, it just extends from the windowsill all the way out, giving it a more wider stance. And um, there's not much detailing here on the doors and on the flanks. And I like that because this is a huge SUV and it looks even larger because of that. A neat little design detail, of course, are the side mirrors. Now, normally you just get a plastic bit here, just juts out of the door. But uh, on this one, it actually comes from lower down. And I'm usually not a fan of chrome, but for some reason, it just works here on the GS8. It extends all the way out to the body. It looks small, but in all fairness, it does give a good clear view on the outside. The face makes or breaks pretty much anything, whether it is a person or in this case, a car. The GS8 looks bold and brash when you just take a look at its front end. And some people might like that, some people might not like that. Some people might like something a little bit more subtle. And the GS8 is definitely far from that. Now the front end here at the headlights, you get T-shaped lights and lower down. I like how GAC made the effort of making an intricate fog light housing design. You got this big, bold and brash grille and it is wide. It almost pushes the headlights out of the way. And of course you got this GAC logo. Look at that camera neatly integrated just below it. Now the grille design isn't your typical one. It's not like a slat or a vent or whatnot. It actually has a, an intricate design detail. And all in all the design, as I mentioned earlier, is really good on this one, at least in my opinion. And um, it's cohesive. Yeah, it's boxy, it's angular. And for some people, that's how an SUV should look like. And I do also have to point out the color of this thing, which is green. So what's our verdict on the GAC GS8? Well, let's do a rundown of its pros and cons. Well, pros, definitely the comfort, the performance, and surprisingly good economy, plus vast amounts of space, and it's loaded with tech. Plus, standard is the active safety features, such as automatic emergency braking, and lane keeping assist. Now, as for cons, well, it's not really a con per se, but it's not exactly a sporting machine, but that's not the purpose of the GS8. But rather, I do have something to say about that lane keeping assist system, which is pretty sensitive. Also, I, I should mention that the fuel tank capacity of this could be bigger. It's about 65 liters. Your typical big SUV or crossover would have 80 liters. So yes, it's efficient, but uh, the range might suffer a little bit. Then there's the matter of physical buttons, or rather the lack of it, especially for the climate control system. But all in all, well, we're gonna rate the GAC GS8 
pretty highly and at under 2.3 million pesos for all this tech all this comfort and all that space it's looking squarely at the rivals namely the kia sorento the hyundai santa fe the even bigger hyundai palisade and the ford explorer and if you're going to look at the prices of all of those this still comes out a lot cheaper than the rest of them as for the rating i know some of you are going to disagree with me but i can't deny its capabilities so i am going to give it a 9 out of 10. so about that question should the country of origin matter i can't change your opinion or what's embedded in your head about the gac's country of origin but you really can't deny that it is a very solid and capable family crossover a big one that is